Is your demanding work lifestyle in need of fire-resistant clothing that can keep up? Well, L4FR clothing should be your go-to for quality, affordability, safety, and style. L4FR was founded by a third-generation oil field worker who is also a veteran. Thus, this company has a deep appreciation for reliability and longevity, all while we provide first-rate customer service. Our durable apparel will serve you well for many years to come, whether you're working on a pipeline, a lineman climbing utility poles, or in any other environment requiring fire-resistant apparel. L4FR has you covered. Our apparel is tough enough to resist hazardous conditions while still providing high comfort and style. L4FR provides clothing options to ensure your safety and comfort, whether you're on the job or not. To view our complete inventory of flame-resistant garments, please visit our online store at L4FRclothing.com or give us a call at 817-757-4935. See habla espanol. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. everyone and welcome to the weekly wrap-up show week five it's your boy brett swinney here alongside of me in this empty room tonight is mr red zone kyle owens how's it going good man how are you doing man i'm doing great uh you've been the star lately man every time i turn around i see you uh on tv these days listen man i'm making my tv and uh internet debuts you know uh it's going good though i'm, I'm enjoying it i think i think it's fun i think we're uh they've been doing this They've been doing this the past, I don't know, three, four, five years. I don't know how long they've been doing Red Zone Overtime, but they've been doing Red Zone Overtime for three or four or five years. Um, the viewership numbers this year are the highest they've ever been. So I don't know if that's the KO effect or not. Hey, something's working. Hey, I, I think might as well. Might as well take credit for it, right? Yeah, well, it's it's awesome, though. I'm having a good time. But I'm also enjoying talking football every week with you all on here, too. Well, me and you. Well, in the <laughs> chat, too, whoever's in the chat. We're, we're, Eddie will be here, I'm sure um and again if you're here make sure you chat with us we'll uh we'll integrate you into the show it's part of the our, our weekly wrap-up we like to hear from you guys as well um kyle you you did better than me this week uh seven and three right um yeah. i had six and four so i'm i'm still above average as as our friend uh jeremy would say he's average i'm above average so six and four um it was a it was a rough week this week well we had uh, some upsets yeah, 
I think anyway. I mean, maybe on on paper, maybe they weren't upsets, but in my picks, they were upsets. Like uh, I picked, you know, I picked Pine Tree over Marshall, which I think a lot of people did uh, looking at it. Most of the people did. But um, yeah, like the Pine Tree Marshall one, like the way Marshall had been playing, I didn't expect them to come out and beat Pine Tree. So that was the one, one of the ones I got wrong. And then the Arp West Rusk one, I thought Arp was going to pull it off. But um, West Rusk was able to get the win there. So a lot, lot of upsets last week, though. Yeah, week. Eddie's, Eddie's here. He's asking if we met everyone. So <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, I think Vince I is know. supposed to be joining us at some point. Um, hadn't heard from Corey. We'll, we'll see if he uh, shows up. Um, I, speaking of making him mad, I think Jeremy uh, might have made Corey mad, uh, kind of telling him where he was on the standings last week. <laughs> <laughs> All the way at the bottom, huh? It was, it was well, not all the way at the bottom. It was way down low. All right, here we go. We got uh oh, we got Jay Washington. Oh. Welcome, Jay. Eight and two, better than the wow. professor. Wow, professor's not here. You better better be careful calling out the professor. He's he's gaining us on us a little bit. Um, that's that's not bad. Uh, Jay, good good job. Um, I will say for the weekly winner, I'll, I'll have to give him credit. My brother. Uh, Drew Swinney was the winner. He had 10 out of 10. He was the only person that got all 10 correct. So uh, shout out to him. Um, I didn't look at the standings. He let me know that before I actually looked at the leaderboard. Of course. Uh, so um, Jason Shivers continues to lead everyone at 40 right now. There's about there's five of us at 37 that are in second place. So I'm coming, um, though. I'm coming. I'm, I'm, I'm in 21st place. But it's not as bad as it sounds. I think I'm like ten games back. I can make that up over the over the course of the season. As long as you get your picks in, unlike some folks that don't get their picks submitted. Yeah. Oh look, my boy Jake went seven and three two. See. And we got we got Jonathan Bradshaw here. Welcome, Jonathan. Jake, seven three. All right. You must be copying your picks too. Him and Eddie are are uh, copying your picks, Kyle. <laughs> if they get the I'm same money, it must be. Uh, we got. Uh, Derek again was the beast beast live say we we do that we record that over the weekend and it goes live every wednesday morning at 9 a.m we have the youtube uh, video version and we also have a audio on the power podcast platform um and you can get both of those on the app if you have that um Derek. so that's a good question um I, I've I was really surprised in some like you said, Kyle. The, the the there's also some games that I wasn't surprised at the outcome. I was surprised at the differential of the games. Like I was thinking, some of these games might be closer. They were big blowouts. Some games I thought would be blowouts, but were, were closer. Um, let's start with the first one. Um, game one, uh, McKinney over Tyler High, thirty-one twenty-six. I actually went out to Rose Stadium and checked this one out. Um, McKinney got off to a really good start. They got the ball first, went down, scored, onside kicked right out of the box. Ooh. Talking about some some uh, cojones, I'd say. Um, got the <laughs> onside kick. fortitude. Yeah, got the onside kick and scored. So it was fourteen to zero right out of the box. Now the rest of the game was pretty even um, as far as the back. It was back and forth. McKinney, I think they led at one point thirty-one to seven. And then Tyler High came back, but a lot of penalties um, were affecting Tyler High. They they had some dumb, sportsmanlike uh, like conduct penalties. You know the things that you can't have happen in a big game like that. Um, they had happened. Now the the last play, or I'd say the last play, the last big play, um, Tyler High actually had a chance. They they threw a pass complete and it was a touchdown to take the lead. Called back for illegal man downfield. I've yet to see the film. I, I, I was watching. I watched the game. I went back and watched it on the stream after I found out that was the penalty call because the way I was watching it had no audio. We won't uh, get into that. But um, I, could, I so I didn't know what the call. I saw the ineligible downfield, but I was like, I couldn't see it. So I went back and I watched it the next day. Yes, he was down. He was a good three or four yards downfield when okay. the ball was thrown. Okay, so, so it was a call. legitimate call. It's unfortunate. But it's a legit call. So for everybody blaming the refs, which I, that's another thing I saw last week, a lot of online chatter of these refs are horrible and they cost us the game. Listen, I agree that refs aren't – they're not the best. They don't, they don't always get the call right. They're humans too. They don't always get the right call. But I'm not for blaming a game on the refs because there are plenty of other opportunities in that game that you could have won the game. 
So yeah. you can't blame a game on the refs. Do they make it harder? Absolutely. But you can't say, oh, we lost because of the refs. If the refs were better, we would have won. No, if you would have made more plays, you would have won. Yeah. So if Tyler High wouldn't have got down 24-10, then maybe they would have maybe they would have been able to win that game and wouldn't have made such a big comeback. But you know, yeah. but it was a it was a it was a legit call at the end of the game. It's unfortunate because I was I was hyped up when I saw him score. I'm like, yes. Then I saw the flag. I'm like, oh no. Uh, yeah, I, and I was looking for one, honestly, from being at that game the entire night. It just seemed like when they would get some momentum, you know, then they would go out there and, and you know, this penalty wasn't one of those, you know, a sportsman like or those kind of, but still mistakes. You can't, in those kind of games, you can't make mistakes. It was a very high stakes game. Um, and we talked about this district. It's going to be really close between, you've got Lancaster who starts off rough, but they played Longview pretty well. So you're going to see them, um, find their way in there you've got mckinney north you have forney who's playing really well right now so you look at tyler high and lufkin and you're like hmm i don't think both those teams are getting in they might be playing for that fourth spot possibly if that yeah i think i think it, it's going to come down probably to i believe longview and forney um in a couple of weeks for that district title um you could put them one two and then like you said maybe mckinney north at that three spot. So then, yeah, Tyler High, West Mesquite, Lufkin, I think they're all kind of fighting for that that fourth spot. It's going to be interesting. That It makes those games important, which is a big deal now, especially if, with Tyler High playing Lufkin, making it a big game like that's with the playoff implications on the line. That's what you love to see. That's what you yeah. want. Yeah, it could be one of the biggest games in the area whenever that game is. Um, but I think the overall I thing I got out of Tyler High, the thing I saw that we talked about, is the fact that they were down and they didn't quit. They they stayed in the game. Even with the mistakes and the penalties, they still were able to fight back in the game. I think the old Tyler High might have thrown in the towel at halftime and said, oh, we're, we're done, and, and they wouldn't have yeah. gave any effort at the, in the second half. So well, That's what I, I – I was talking to Coleman about that this week and I, or, or last week, and I said – you know, I think I actually said this on Red Zone Overtime, that, that a game like that two years ago, even last year, but two or three years ago – that 24-7 at halftime, the final score would have been 52-7 to or 52-10. to it, it would have been a, a blowout. But Tyler right. High, like we've talked about this season under Coach Woods, they have shown a lot of fight. That old Cujo spirit coming back where they're fighting. They're not going to be an easy out. They're not going to be an easy out for anybody. And so that's, again, if you want to take a positive from, from a loss, that's the positive, that they never gave up. They fought and nearly won that game. Probably should have won that game. Mm-hmm. I think at times they did outplay uh, McKinney North, so that's going to be tough. That that district will continue to watch that as we as we move on. But there's going to be some battling there for for two through five. I think is going to be even six. I mean, there's it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be a dogfight every week. But that's that's going to make that district exciting to watch and keep up with. Yeah. So we, I'm assuming you had Tyler High as well, Kyle. That yeah. was one of your misses. Yes, yeah, so I think a lot of people had Tyler High. Um, looking back at the pickums, I believe they were actually favored um, to win yeah. as far as the picks go. Um, I know we had, <laughs> yeah, we had seventy-two picks this week, uh, pickers this week. So another yeah. good number for our pickem challenge. Let's try to get hundred this week. So tell all your friends about it. We want to try to get around hundred uh, every week um, to get to get the picks in. So game two, Sulphur Springs fifty-two to thirty-four or Liberty Allo. Um, I, this was one. Um, that also I uh, missed. Um, man, I, I thought Liberty Allo coming off that game before that, I thought they were going to – I thought they'd show me something. Uh, Silver Springs, I wasn't sure how good they were. I know they barely squeaked by Jacksonville. We've talked about how uh, Jacksonville is not as strong this year. And so I just didn't – I wasn't sure about them. But they showed me something as, as they knocked off Liberty Allo, which they played a tough schedule. Um, Liberty Allo has. And so – that went over Atlanta last, I guess it was the week before last, um, was impressive to me. Um, but, again, I think they're just not as good as Sulphur Springs, I guess, because uh, Sulphur Springs laid their claim as they're looking to get that, that one of those playoff spots. Yeah, I I picked Sulphur Springs. I, I kind of figured they would win. We, we we talked about it last week and on, that, uh, on the Beast from the East uh, podcast as well. I just think Sulphur Springs is the better team. I mean, look at them now. They're on a three-game win streak with wins over Hallsville, 
uh, Van Alstein and now Liberty Allo. So I, I, they're one loss to Mount Pleasant. Yeah, it's not a, not a great loss to have. Uh, and again, the wins aren't Im- over impressive teams, but they're winning. They're doing what they're supposed yeah. to do. So, um, I, yeah, that 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 district's going to be interesting uh, with Sulphur Springs in in with Paris and Anna and how they're playing right now. Um, communities who they have coming up in a couple of weeks. It'll be interesting to see what they do. But yeah, Sulphur Springs, you know, just a couple of years ago in 19, 2019, 2020, and 2021 had horrible seasons. One and nine, uh, a two and four season in the COVID year, and then 0 oh and 10 in 2021. Went seven and four last season, made the playoffs in, in four and one this year. So a turnaround's happening in Sulphur Springs. Well, another thing is helping Kyle is the drop down to 4A. Yes. And I, I talked about this um, – I was on the show this week with uh, Terry Bennett on Sideline to Sideline. He had a special edition. Uh, Matt Diggs had a segment, and I was on there for East Texas. And we talked about Sulphur Springs, and he, we talked about how Jacksonville and Sulphur Springs dropped down two years ago. And him and, and Grant said that one of those teams would take advantage of it, and it's been Sulphur Springs. They have uh, Jacksonville just hasn't looked like a team that used to be in 5A dropped to 4A. They just, it just hasn't worked for, well for them. But it has worked out for Sulphur Springs, um, and I think they're looking at another playoff spot uh, this season. Yeah, and the the way that Sulphur Springs is winning, the way they won that game, uh, the quarterback, Brady Driver, through the air, he had 189 yards, three touchdowns. That's a good game. But the rushing attack, 314 yards on the ground for Sulphur Springs. That's 9.2 yards per carry on on the ground against Liberty Allo. So, yeah, it, look, there's Eddie. if you could – Eddie said this. He had the same yeah. thing. They couldn't stop it. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If 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 Sulphur Springs can run the football, then that's you can you can beat a lot of teams if you can run the football effectively. Hey, it's our hooks man, Chris. Welcome, Chris. What's up, Chris? He said Ellie's not good. Um, yeah. So we a lot of <laughs> a lot of turmoil going on. Oh, um, you don't like to see that. Derek says Anna whips on everyone. Anna's pretty good this year. They are. Um, let's see who else. Jonathan said he had Sulphur Springs. So I think Eddie, Eddie didn't must have not copied you because he had so he had Le in this one. I think he went too homerish on this pick. Yeah. 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 I don't. I don't know. I. I wouldn't have. I didn't think Liberty Allo. Honestly, I'm surprised it was. They scored 34. Honestly, yeah. that was the I, surprising part. I was hoping that the the talent, as far as the the athletes on the field, would kind of propel them on this. I just I wasn't it wasn't L- Le as much as I just wasn't sold on Sulphur Springs. But I I feel like now they're um, they're a solid team. That's a that's a good win because you know Le is always going to have good athletes up there. Oh yeah, they, yeah they always have great athletes. They just got to put it together. That's that's been their problem is not being able to put it all together at once. Mm-hmm. Well. Speaking of Jackson, we just talked about it. The next game, game uh, three, Athens over Jacksonville, 48 to 28. And uh, Athens uh, is taking a claim for a playoff spot, Kyle. I mean, this is a big, this is a big win. They, they were able to beat Jacksonville by 20. Um, and so we know we talked how Jacksonville's down, but, and they've got a big game. And we talked about it on the Beast from the East. They've got a big game against Lindale this week. Um, but that's a, an impressive start for Athens as they look to try to get one of those playoff spots. Athens is playing good football right now. Uh, Their one loss the start of the year to Brownsboro by a point. Uh, I think maybe if those two teams met again, maybe Athens wins that one now. Um, Because you can't, you know, that first week game, you never know what's going to happen that first week. But after that, you know, rattled off four in a row. They're going to have a tough one in Lindale this Friday night. I'm looking forward to that game. I think it's going to be a really good game. Pick the computer. Well, why didn't you do it, Eddie? Let AI take over and just use <laughs> Ask AI who you should pick. <laughs> we need to find this computer. I need I need this computer, please. It's a supercomputer. But yeah, and Athens Athens has a really good football team. Lindell and Athens this Friday night will be a really good game. Athens did what they should against Jacksonville. Jacksonville zero and five. That's a. I, I didn't I didn't think Jacksonville would be you know burning doors down coming in this season. But I didn't expect them to be 0 and 5 out the gate. No. So no, I, uh, it's a little I, interesting thought, seeing what's going on in Jacksonville. I thought they'd be fighting for that fourth spot, honestly. I thought it was a I thought it was between Palestine, Henderson, and and uh Jacksonville preseason wise. But now Athens has said, not nah, 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 don't forget about us. Yeah. 
Yeah, Athens, I'm telling you this, you could potentially say that this Athens Lindell game could decide the the three third, and third. maybe four seed. Yeah, third yeah. seed maybe in that district. And I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. I mean, I don't think Lindell, the difference between them and the that four, five, six is as big as it has been in the past. No, I I think I think three down is very very close together. Like I think even even you know Jacksonville, they could go out there and, and pull something out. You never know. Like it's it's it that whole district top to bottom is just kind of you got Chapel Hill and Kilgore that kind of separated themselves, and everybody else is like, hey, let's fight it out for two spots. Yeah. Welcome, Travis, to the show. Uh, he said Athens with the upset. I don't necessarily think it's an upset, honestly. Uh, Athens has been playing well this year. I think maybe an upset in some people's minds, but I don't think Athens went in there thinking that they were going to lose. I think they had the every audacity to think they had the better team going in. Yeah, so. I mean, they, they do have the better record going yeah. in, but I that think was, I understand why he's calling yeah, it an upset, though. Jacksonville's probably – their schedule is tougher, and they've played tougher competition than Athens probably overall. I mean – yeah, I think we're gonna, I, Jacksonville, they played what they played White House, they played uh Sulphur Springs, which is we've found out they're pretty good. Um, who else did they play? They play, did they play Nacogdoches or no, they played Pine Tree, didn't they? I, I, don't, I just had it pulled up, I don't remember. I had it pulled up a second ago, but I, I lost I'd it. I'd already closed it out. <laughs> yep, they had White House, Crandall. Longview, Pine Tree, Athens, Sulphur Springs. Yeah. I mean, Pine Tree, we know how good they've played this year. Uh, they've been pretty solid as a 5A. White House is good. Sulphur Springs is obviously very good. They got a Crandall team that's, uh, you know, beat Kaufman and, and also Jacksonville. They lost to Forney, but Forney's really good. But, I mean, I I think they're, they're the schedule was tougher, but I still think this is not really surprising. Uh, Eddie says they're projected 2-8, and eight, so – I mean, I, who's they, the two wins over? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, you look at the rest of the schedule. Ma- Henderson, maybe. Henderson, I think probably if you were, if I was going to say preseason, it probably I would have said Athens and Henderson. Yeah, but but now yeah. they. So I don't know. I don't know where those two wins are going to come from. Says Eddie says they were not projected to win any. So they had a really good year. Well, and, and Coach Harrell's a good coach out there in Athens. He's got the pedigree, you know. That Harold name, you know, means something. So I think uh I think that's the key. They're real young and I think they'll get continue to get better. Um I think last year Vince had said that they thought they were gonna be good. Maybe it was just a year too early because they've they've been a real good team this year. Yeah, they've turned things on. I'm excited to see what they do Friday night. That's I'm I'm that's one of the games I'm looking forward to. The I most. just I just spoke him into existence as he joins hey. us. Hey. We, we just, just gonna ask you Vince. Oh, we got a little echo. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, you got a little yeah, echo going. Echo. Yeah. Oh, oh there, there we go. That's that that fixed we were, it. Just, we were just talking about Athens, how you uh, were talking about Athens last year, and I think you just were mm-hmm. one year early. We are talking about this Athens win over Jacksonville. Oh, well, I mean, like Jeremy said, Jacksonville's not really good. They're, they're not good. And I mean Athens is still good. Don't get me wrong. Athens is a good team, but Jacksonville, I don't I don't know I don't know what they're missing. I don't know what it is that they don't have, but man, it's it's really hurting them. A lot. A lot. So Eddie's here and he said he's been taken up for you, Vince. Oh, I appreciate that, Eddie. <laughs> I appreciate you. Travis is here, uh, is one of our new listeners. Giving the history of Athens football, they're definitely a better team this year. Yeah, I would definitely say so. I mean, um, I think this game coming up is one of the biggest games in a long time in Athens football. It's one against Lindale. I don't want to hype it up too much, but that's going to figure out where they sit in this district, I think. Um, Vince, we've talked about the McKinney, Texas, or uh, Tyler High game and the Sulphur Springs Liberty Allo. Is there anything you want to add to those um, before we move on to the next one? No, nah, I'll just go ahead and move on. I'm sure you, y'all you elaborated on that. I mean, you were at the the, the yeah. Tyler High game, so I know you yeah. probably had a good opinion as to what happened out there. Um, I heard that, like, even though 
they lost that it was um they they did fight back and could have won the game so um yeah. i don't know much we, about the liberty Allo game personally but uh me and you talked a little bit about it about the uh the uh tyler high game and stuff you know what you saw out yeah. there yeah we kind of talked about it kind of we we definitely saw a different team um watching it back as far as like last year it would have been just they would have given up at halftime and not fought back so uh, it's mm-hmm. kind of the theory and, and actually the penalty at the end kyle did go get to go back and see it and it, it was, was legit. it was a down a player ineligible player downfield so he was, uh, he was a good three. It's three unfortunate. It's unfortunate, you know, and it happens, yeah. you know. But um, to me, I, I don't really like to use this term a lot, but I feel like it was a good loss <laughs> because – and I say that because you were getting your butts whooped. And instead <laughs> of quitting, you did the complete opposite. You fought back. That right there, I think, put everybody in the district on notice. Like, they're going to be hard to put away. They're not going to quit just because you up 30, you know, uh, that's not going to be enough. So uh, I think the district is, is the whole district is probably planning for him. Let's be honest. The whole district is probably planning for him at this point. Yep. Um, All right. Well, game, what, what game four got? here, game four, the game we were at Vince as Brook Hill beat Atlanta 28 to 18, mm-hmm. um, man, we talked about this a little bit on the Brook Hill podcast, and if you if you're if you're missing the the fire the cannon podcast that that Coach Jeremy Hubbard puts out each and every week on Mondays, usually sometimes Tuesdays, depending on the week, you're missing out. Um, he does a really great job with it. I was had the opportunity to be on there with him a little bit this week as they had some some uh, senior activities that at that's something new at private schools. They they take a whole week and it's like a senior trip week and it's a Dubai week and. Everything basically kind of shuts down for athletic wise, and so um, I got to talk to him a little bit. But go back and listen to those episodes. He does a really good job. You get to hear from the coaches each and every week. Um, sometimes me or Vince or whoever's doing the games will will try to jump on and uh, and and talk to to Coach Hubbard, and we'll discuss that. We talk to Coach Ryle, the head football coach, uh, volleyball coach, uh, Mika Hubbard's on, and, and Josiah White, cross country coach. So just a, a plug on that. So um, Vince. Tell me, tell me what you thought about uh, Brookie. I know we've talked about it uh, numerous times about the game, but uh, give us your thoughts on the game from Friday night. Uh, Friday night's game, Brook Hill, um, it was very exciting. Uh, we got to see good defense. We got to see uh, new revitalized offense. And then we got some special teams. You know, uh, my boy Zigby, uh zig is what i call him zigs i still trying to figure out which one fit better but man he he got a leg on him he's got a foot on him and i mean he he kicked a 50 yarder i think brett the first time and they they said it was no good it looked good from us from from what we saw but they said it was no good but i mean man it was just exciting because when he kicked it like it was a 50 yarder and I think it went probably twenty yards past the goalpost. You know, like it, it wasn't. It, just, it wasn't it just, lack of. It wasn't lack of distance that it missed. Nah, it wasn't that at all. And so, uh, luckily, he had another shot at it later on in the game, and he he nailed it. He, I mean, absolutely nailed it. And I think I have never been more excited watching a a a, a, a field goal like that. You know, a, a, a kick like that. What about um, the onside kick, Vince? And the onside, yeah, yeah, and the onside kick. I forgot about that one. Yeah, man, it that it when was gotta, it was just a great game, man. When you got a kicker that's kicking the ball five yards deep in the end zone, and the first thing yeah. you do is you you just turn around and go chase it, and then he kicks yeah. it to himself, kicks it to yeah. himself. It's and like he it. I, it's almost like the defender. I don't know what the defender was thinking. I say defender, the the guy receiving the the kick. I don't really know. What he was, I think he was kind of scared and hesitant. And so by the time he decided to commit to grabbing the ball, Ziggs was already there. It's like he kicked it and he ran directly to it and just swallowed just it up. With, and it, he just nagged it with that long arm. He's six four. I mean, yeah. he just 
It's crazy. I was like, man, like, when have you seen a kicker do that? Like, he went and got recovered his own kick. He yeah, did a yeah. Pat McAfee. He did the onside yeah. kick and recovered it himself. Yeah. Well, yeah, and he, so. he's special. I mean, they gave him a belt. They were celebrating the sidelines. Mm -hmm. The defense was excellent all night. You had the block punt early um, to set up oh, a yeah, touchdown the block punt. Yeah. in the first quarter. Um, Atlanta played good. They, they had a couple of plays where they broke out. Um, they did. They had, some, they had some speed at tailback, um, and I think like three plays, and they were probably fifty plus yard play. Everything else, though, Brook Hill pretty much kept in front of them and, and were able to contain the speed of Atlanta. So, um, looking at this game, though, I, I had, I don't, I think I had Brook Hill. Did everyone here have Brook Hill? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we all had Brook Hill in this one. Um, I'm interested to see what you guys had in the chat because um, I think the. <laughs> I think it was a decently um, even hole there. I think it was, yeah, 32 people had Brook Hill and 40 had Atlanta. So um, so I think that, the, yeah. Uh, oh, look, even Eddie took our Brook Hill guard. Wow. Okay. And Atlanta's one of his backyard teams. He must know something about that. So, um, but, yeah, I think this game was a, a, a springboard into – um, Brook Hills district season, so they'll be ready to roll. Um, game five, this might have been the surprise of the night as far as the score differential as Lindale found some defense and won 56 to seven. Kyle, uh, mm -hmm. Lindale's Matador defense, uh, played well. They I think did. they were listening to you, Kyle. I think <laughs> they, they was, yeah, I hope so. Um, I, I, I really think you might, might have made them mad. <laughs> that's, that's fine. whatever motivation they need um yeah looking at the stats though they they did do good defensively they held the uh henderson quarterback smiley to just 71 yards on the night nine of 22 passing for 71 yards and two interceptions uh they did let a running back starling go over 100 yards he had 14 carries for 107 but they only gave up 166 on the ground and 71 through the air so yes and only one touchdown so yes absolutely Lindell's defense showed up and showed out, and that's what they're going to need to do this week too against Athens. So um, I, I was I was surprised at the score. I figured Lindell would win. I picked Lindell, but I was surprised at the the differential. I figured Lindell would put up points, but I figured Henderson would put up some points too. Well, Jake, yeah, there you go. And defense, defense win you championships. So, so mm -hmm. I'll find, I found out some inside information. I, I did, uh, of course, like I said, I did the show with Terry, and we talked <clears> about <throat> Henderson. He does a uh, – there's a Henderson show. So those of you that are Henderson fans in East Texas um, on L4 Media, they, they do a uh, a coach's show each week for Henderson. Uh, evidently their center was injured and was out. Uh, we all know how that can affect uh, an offense if you have to replace that. You don't talk about center much, but that's an important, you know, combination with the center quarterback exchange. And they had several other injuries. So I think that played – as part of the score factor, maybe maybe a little more than what we had thought. Um, but shout out mm -hmm. to Lindell. Great job. I mean, you you, you show up and you play whoever they have. So, um. <laughs> and, and, and Eddie, I see Eddie. that. But here's the thing. <laughs> when it was already so high, it's got to be coming down. Look, it was like in the – it was like 46 <laughs> last week. So, we're good. We're, we're headed in the right direction. It's, it's coming down, yeah. It's, it's, it's coming uh, down. Now, it could spike back good. up this week against Athens. Who knows? But if that defense shows up again, mm -hmm. I think Lindell mm – -hmm. Lindell needs to to have a couple of good defensive games before they before they get real well. They get Athens, then they have to go to Kilgore, and then Chapel Hill comes to Lindell back to back weeks. It's, so you better not, shore up your defense now. It's not before, getting easier. <laughs> no, you gotta shore up he, that defense now. He's watching. He says, "Okay, all right." So uh, game six, Longview fifty two, Lancaster thirty five. Um, I'm not surprised that Longview won. Obviously, they're the best team in that district uh, by far, we think. But Lancaster played them tough. I mean, 17 points is the closest that anybody's played them here recently besides the one they lost, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Guys, I, I, Lancaster is one team that's going to be in that mix for those playoffs. I think you got Longview up top, and then your your next ones are McKinney North, Lancaster. You got Tyler High. You've got Lufkin. You got Forney. I think those are your playoff contenders there. Um, somebody's going to, a couple of those are going to get left out. Yeah, I don't, I, I just, 
I think I think Lancaster's down a little bit. I, I think I think they're down a little bit this year. Um, so I, I I think Longview giving up that many points kind of surprised me. With with uh, thirty five points to Lancaster is a little little much, I think. But they didn't do it through the air either. They did it on the ground. Taylor Tatum, the uh, OU mm-hmm. commit. How about two fifty on the ground by Taylor mm-hmm. Tatum and three touchdowns. Andrew Tut, not good through the air, two for nine for 35 yards and a touchdown. But he didn't need to be. Taylor Tatum r- controlled the game. So uh, it was a good game for Longview. But I, I think, again, it's kind of the theme of the night. The defense just needs to shore up a little bit. We saw the defense against Lufkin, how they shut out Lufkin, um, who had another really good mm-hmm. running back, Kedron Young. But they shut out Lufkin and then gave up 35 to Lancaster. So, uh, just need to show up the defense a little bit, but Longview's offense can definitely – when Tatum's rolling like that, Longview's going to be hard to stop. This game was our lock of the week, by the way. Uh, 72 out of 72 people picked Longview. Okay. So, well, there's a free win for everybody. That was the game of the week mm-hmm. lock. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't think anybody's surprised by that one. Um, the next one on the, ske- on the schedule, I was a little – wasn't surprised. Kilgore 37 7 over Palestine. I thought it might be a little closer. Uh, Palestine's been trending up a little bit, but I think it just goes to show how good Kilgore's defense is. Um, and Palestine also, I'm, I'm, they struggle on throwing the ball. So if they get behind, mm-hmm. then I'm sure yes. Kilgore is just clamping in and just blitzing like none other, I'm sure. Um, because they just, they just, they're not built to as far as the way their offense is constructed for a comeback. Very true. That's very true. Once you get somebody out of their rhythm, if you're a good running team, if that's what your core is, you, you got to play from ahead in a way, right? You know, because if you get – well, not, not really that you play from ahead, but you can't get too far behind because now you have to play outside of your realm of, of, of play. Like – Everybody starts to think, okay, now I got to throw the football. Now, I mean, honestly, if I was a coach, I'd probably be looking more heavily on my defense. Like, well, let's try to make a stop, and then we can continue to do what we do But as far as running the ball. But nobody thinks like that. Everybody thinks I got to throw. And what ends up happening is you get far behind, and then you start doing something you haven't practiced all year, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. You know, and teams like Kilgore are gonna punish you for that. You know, they they are really good defensively. So, um, yeah. But I mean, it was it was. I felt like it was expected. I just think Kilgore is Kilgore. I don't want to say they're sneaky good. I just don't know how good they are yet. I and yeah, I think the not. only. We may challenge not know that last game of the season. Exactly. We we don't. I don't. Uh, their only challenge to me right now is going to be Chapel Hill. Hey, hey, Vince, who's calling that game? Is that is that going to be me and you? Me and you. Is that us? Game we're game right 11. there. Our week eleven. That's what we're going to be doing. We'll yeah, be. I hope in, I'm there for that one too. We'll be in Chapel Hill. Hey, the 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 trifecta. Well, it's going to be a good game. I think it should be a good game. I want it to be a good. Well, I, okay, so here's I want Chapel Hill to win, win, but <laughs> Lancaster. Okay, Jonathan. Back. Well, that makes sense. That okay. does make better sense. Okay, thanks Thank for the you. clarification. Um, um Kil- so Kilgore, I- I'm gonna have to disagree with you a little bit, Vince. The only part I'm gonna disagree on is I think Kilgore is gonna mm-hmm. have a test with Lindell. I think, I think Lindell will test them. It's it's going to be their 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 toughest test in district <laughs> until Chapel Hill until the end of the season. I think you'll see a little bit more. I just don't Kilgore trust later. Lindell, man. I can't do it. Like a, you know, a year or two ago, I I said the same thing, but now I'm just like, nah, man. I just don't see it. I want to see it. I want to see it just like you, Kale. I do. But what I'm seeing out of I need I need Kilgore's, another I don't like what I'm seeing out of Lindell. I need That's another my performance from Lindell like last week. I need to That's see what, okay. Yeah. yeah. This, so if, that if, was if the Lindell, best performance Lindell gave this whole year. If Lindell can go out and dominate Athens or you know win by yeah. a substantial margin. Yeah, if they if they do that to Athens, yeah. Hey, then, then now, we got a game now in, I'm in talking weeks. 
maybe we fix, maybe absolutely. we fix something on defense. One one game, I think. Okay, we'll see if it's a pattern. Well, see if they. But can. we know Henderson doesn't have the most explosive offense, so I I, I want to. Yeah, Athens, they don't. Athens will be a test. They don't. Athens will be the test. So we'll have, we'll have to see. But I'm I, I'm with you. I think Kilgore is very very good. Could, and I've been I've been talking about Kilgore a lot lately because I I really. I love defensive games. I love t- defensive teams. I love teams that that really know how to defend, and they make you really dig deep, dive deep into your playbook to find a way to get out of there, right? And uh, I've been saying this a lot about Kilgore to a lot of different people. I just feel like when you're that good defensively, you don't have to put up a lot of points. We just look at that as you're a good team when you can drop 40 on a team or – 50 or 60 or even 70 like Chapel Hill and center are doing to people. But to be honest with you, man, you gotta, we got to give some respect to defensive teams that hold teams all the time to around 20. Bro, they you know, are, are only giving up 16. There they're only giving there 15 a game, but they've like, only given up 16 in the You got to put some respect on, on that. Yeah, yeah, you got to put some respect. We got to start putting the same respect on that stat. Absolutely. Like we do for those offenses that put up sixty and seventy. I think I said you it know. last week. Defense, offense sells tickets. Defense wins championships. Yeah, that's absolutely. a hill I'll die on. Absolutely, that, that def- I agree with that. You got to have a good defense because you're gonna have to get a stop eventually. At mm-hmm. some point, you're gonna have to stop somebody. Yeah. So why not just stop them the whole game? Yeah, yeah. I don't know who's doing it on that defense. I can't wait till that game comes up. I don't know who's doing it on defense, but I want to find out. Well, we'll sure we'll find out there. Last game of the season. Um, game eight, um, another one that I was really surprised by, and I don't know if maybe I was drinking too much of the CM Kool-Aid in this one, but Marshall over Pine Tree, 31 to 13, uh, man, Marshall, Marshall looks, looks good. They're, they're, um, I think they're on track for a, uh, com- competition there with White House, maybe at that top three spot, maybe it's a four, I don't know, see how good Nacogdoches Ends up, but yeah, Eddie, Eddie, the same thing. I'm gonna, he's not here. I'm gonna give Corey a hard time. I, no, he knows I'm just joking with him, but I, I bought what Corey was selling with Pine Tree a little too much then, and did it ain't bought me next this next week. I, I, I'm, I'm off the Pine Tree train for right now. They, they bit me, and uh, oh. man, 31 to 13. I thought even if Pine Tree lost, I thought this would be a little more competitive. Um, I saw a stat somewhere where. Marshall was like eight no in the last eight trips to was it Maverick Stadium East they called it or West or whatever it is they're calling uh, Pine Tree Stadium theirs like that's that's an impressive stat so um, yeah it looks yeah. like uh, Eddie had this one looks like this was one of Jay's losses um, yeah I don't know I, I was just expecting a little more I, I didn't do my I didn't do the actual physical piece but I actually have them written down from when we did the show. And so I picked Pine Tree too. I, I thought Pine Tree. I was drinking that Kool Aid, but I think I'm about. <laughs> I feel like I'm about ready to hop off of that because I think this was the pick that I. I first I picked Marshall, and then I went back and I said, "Man, I don't know. Corey might be right." And I and I went back and I said, "No, nah, I'm gonna go with Pine Tree." <clears throat> and I said, "I hope it don't bite me," and it bit me. Yeah. Yeah, I went with yeah. Pine Tree too. I thought. I just thought the what looking at. When we were making the picks, looking at Marshall's schedule and how they've performed, like their mm-hmm. one win was over Henderson, which we've established is not having the greatest season. So, I mean, but their losses were to Tyler High, Longview, and Carthage, which are three very good football teams. But the one mm-hmm. only game they were really competitive in was the Tyler High one. So looking at that and then how Pine Tree had been close in all their games. And, yeah, I was I, I hopped on the Pine Tree bandwagon as well. But – um I and I remember off. we talked about that because I remember saying how I felt like because I was at that Marshall Tyler High game and I said, man, they didn't do nothing until that overtime. That pick six led them into yeah. that overtime and they kept going back and forth. But there was three and a half quarters where Marshall did nothing. And that's why I said, that's why I'm going with Pine Tree. That's what sold me on Pine Tree. I said, nah, See? I don't think no, Marshall's it was, that good. It was you and Corey, both of you. Uh, yeah, so I, I talked myself <laughs> into it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, but I'm 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 off that now. So, Vince said he's off that narcotic. He ain't doing it no <laughs> yeah, more. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm off that drug now. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm clean. <laughs> I'm clean. Yeah. 
Eddie says Marshall is one of the toughest preseason schedules. I, I could see that. I mean, it's a pretty tough schedule they have. But yes, it is. But you got to be competitive in it. I remember a couple of years ago, Gladewater had one of the. They still do, but had one of those really tough non-district schedules. But they just weren't competitive in any of those games. And I'm like, that's that's great. I'm I'm all for scheduling tough non-district opponents to get you ready for district. I'm all, I would rather. I would rather my team go through a tough non-district schedule and be 0 and 5 than a cupcake schedule and be 5 and 0 headed into district. So I, I'm all for that, but you got to be competitive in them. Like you got to you got to make some moves in it. You can't just get blown out in every one of them cuz that that does no nobody any good. Yeah. Um next one up game 9, uh White House squeaks one out over Nat 35-32. Um this is another one that I thought White House might handle. Um, but this shows how good Nack's playing right now. I mean, they they were tough. They uh, they fought hard against Chapel Hill. Um, Vince, we saw them, and we saw a lot of their their front seven was pretty impressive to me when they played Chapel Hill. Um, they kind of they contained Stewart and Brisbane as good as you can almost ask for at times during the game. Um, of course, they finally popped out and did something. But Nacogdoches, this this loss tells me a lot. No, Kyle didn't like the loss. Is telling you a lot. <laughs> I think it tells you that it's a lot. They're a lot closer to the top of the district, maybe than maybe even what we thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, I hate that. I it's a good. That was a good game. I hate that for Nacogdoches. Let me say it like that. I hate it for Nacogdoches because they really are a good team. I really do think that they're a good team. And uh, having to having to play Chapel Hill, and then turn around having to play White House, it just sucks when you know you have a good team, and you playing great teams right now. And as They're a coach, too. yeah, yeah. And so, and as a coach, it's like, what do you say to your kids who are good at what they do, you know? But it just ain't enough to get over that hump, you know. It's like, what do you say to them at, at this time? Because you can't lose them mentally. Right. So, um, but again, that was a good game. Shout out to White House. They they took care of business. They did. And I said they were they were probably looking to get some revenge after last year. I don't know what it is about that matchup, but it's something about that. That's it, I'm not saying it's White House kryptonite, but man, it just seems like as many teams as White House has put away in the last two years. Nacogdoches is a problem. Yeah, I, I was surprised the game was as close as it was. But when you when you look at the stats of it, it really was – Nat probably should have won that game. White House had a yeah. big second quarter where they scored 21. Other than that, it was pretty much all Nat. And the, the quarterback for Nat, Lockett, had 249 through the air, three tutties. They had 195 on the ground. Like, they they played well enough to win the game. And, and to your point, Vince, it's it's – it's disappointing for Nacogdoches to play that well yeah, it's like, and end up losing. Yeah, well, so, and they've got a big one this week, uh, Nack and Pine Tree. That one could be for that four spot. That is the KLTV and KTRE Red Zone game of the week. Oh, Nacogdoches okay. Pine Tree. That where you're going to be? No, I'm not going to Nacogdoches. They got Mark Bounds down there in Nack. So, um, but the uh, two special teams, see. So that's, but it was, it may have been mistakes that White House did, but. Knack was able to capitalize on them. So I think – I don't know, man. I, I like what Knack's got going right now. I'm interested to see how they do against Pine Tree this week. Um, they they are in a part of their schedule where they could rack up some wins and get into the playoffs. They got Pine Tree, then they got Hallsville, and then they got Mount Pleasant. They could rack yeah. up three wins right here in district play and be sitting pretty with Texas High and Marshall to end the season. So yeah. Knack's got an opportunity right now. Yep. And I, I thanks uh thanks for Robbie for uh, joining us tonight. Me uh maybe his first comment with us. I don't remember seeing you, but uh, thanks for joining us. We appreciate the input. Um, but yeah, I think Nacogdoches is right there, man. I think let me look. You're looking at the the district. You see, you see Texas High. I think like at the top, you see White House right there, and you got Marshall now. I think's put themselves. We're talking about that. They're up there in that third spot, maybe. And you got Nac Pine Tree, and what Mount Pleasant? Because Hallsville hasn't looked very good. So that's yeah. I mean, it's could there's gonna be some interesting matchups over the next few weeks. But I really think that Pine Tree to me, Pine Tree Nacogdoches, I think right now is that four spot. Very, very well could be. I mean, it, 
Mm-hmm. This one, this one's kind of similar to the the non four A district, the Chapel Hill Kilgore Lindale district. You kind of have two teams at the top with Texas High. Texas High kind of separated from all of them, and then White House yeah. kind of solidified at that number two. And then it's kind of a free for all with some teams with you know Knack, Mount Pleasant, Pine Tree, at Marshall, Hallsville. Kind of, I think Marshall's kind of like the Lindale of that district. You think they're right yeah. now? I think they're probably the third team, but any given night, I think some one of those other teams could could beat them. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that's going to be a fun district to watch too. I, I'm so excited when district starts because then, now these games matter and 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 the intensity picks up a little bit. We kind of go into that second half of the season like okay. Let's get rolling now. Yes, yeah, every game means something. Uh, speaking of a game that means something, our game 10, um, Wes Russ mm-hmm. of heard us talking mm-hmm. about ARP. Uh, they put the shally whacking on my ARP Tigers. Uh, 49 to 19. Um, man, Wes Russ showed yeah. up was it was ready to play. Um, Actually, I looked at all of my picks here from week five. I had them written down here. Just to show you, I don't know if y'all, y'all can't see that. That's all right. Uh, but I, I know, like I said, I missed my my thing, but I missed only three, and two of these three were two that I changed. I, I'm gonna stop changing my mind no more. I'm gonna stop trusting my gut because that's what happened to me. Like that's what we was talking about, trusting our gut. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and that's when I went with the pine tree thing. I ain't doing that no more. My gut been lying <laughs> to me lately. <laughs> but um, Wes Rusk, that that one, I just. I'm not talking about ARP. I know ARP is good. I I I just felt like West Russ was was going to be tough to beat. This phone call um, was for you. And they man. proved me right. They proved oh. me right. Smink Smink dog on Oh, yeah, t- tell him I tell him I call him back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. T- tell t- Smicky I call him back. Yeah, tell him I call him back, hey, Smink dog. <laughs> look, at, look, when you look at these stats though, Arp had a problem stopping the run. West Rusk yeah. ran for 320. Oof, 320. Yeah. All and, over them. And here's the problem. In that district, that's a running district. Like, Edgewood runs the football. Winona mm-hmm. runs the football. Grand Troop, Saline runs Troop the football. Troop runs the football, too. Quitman runs don't the football. You? Troop runs the football. They all run the football. So, if yep. you can't stop the run, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Now. And that was your first district game, too. So, now you got to think, like, okay, Edgewood – they 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 do run the football, but at the same time, we don't really know how. We don't know what they are since right they now. lost to Winona. Yeah, we don't know what so, they are. They they lost a lot of people. So, but you still got troop in that district. Um, Grand Saline, Grand Saline's pretty. They're gonna run. The, my point though, they're gonna run the football. It, I mean, they may not yeah. be. They may not be as good as West Rusk, but they're still gonna run the football. Yeah. So so, so now it kind of seems like it's gonna be West Rusk troop for the district title now. I wouldn't count ARP out. I mean, well, I'm just saying, as far as like the way it's looking right now, I mean, you've got, I mean, unless they come out and they beat Troop and we could end up with some kind of three. Well, that's what they need to do. They, they, they'll probably, I don't, I don't know. I don't like to guarantee wins. Here, but here's I the, mean, they, they might walk through Winona and Grand Saline, but when they get the Troop, that's the going to be, that's, a, that's a mile mark. Hey, Vince, right they have that, to win that, that Grand Saline game. Where can you find that ARP Grand Saline game in, in two weeks? That's gonna be on uh this website, this art, this app called NetSN. Yeah, hey, you yeah, heard yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have that Grand Saline art yeah. game uh, here. So um, <laughs> if you, I think that'll be a good one. Um, I will say the surprising upset special of the week was the West Rusk Raiders over the Arp Tigers. Only nineteen people out of seventy two picked West Rusk. Well, I, I think that's just because mm. of of kind of how West Rusk has looked this year. I mean, yeah. they, they beat Sabine and Mineola. That was their wins coming in and losses to Tatum and Malakoff that weren't really close. So it's kind yeah. of hard mm-hmm. to get a gauge on what West Rusk is this year. Are they, what, are they a up and down team? I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to say. I mean, I don't, and this could be, <laughs> wow. this could be a, a game Art. where Art just played bad. It could be yeah. a game where Art played I, bad. Yeah. And I will say this too. Um, I a lot of what when I picked West Rusk, a lot of it had to do with how they beat Arp last year. They they kind of blew Arp out last year, and I know that's last year. And I don't like to hold on to the past, but it's something about and I can't figure this out. I can't 
show it to you and quantify it. But, like, it's something about these teams who know each other well, these district games, and their mindset around playing each other. We talked about it before with, with Chapel Hill and Kilgore. And I used to tell – Brett and Corey, I'm like, man, like, I remember when we played White House every single year. And no matter how good we were, the papers, you know, everybody was slanting, saying, hey, Chapel Hill got this win. We would show up, we get out there, and for some reason, mentally, we could not get over that hump. And I just thought to myself, I wonder if this is that hump for them. You know, because that game, I mean, they scored 35 last year, but it was like 56 or something like that to 35. And I was just wondering, I was like, I wonder if this is one of those those milestones for them. Like one of those things that they, they got to check that off the box, you know. Yeah. I, well, if you want to go off, if if you base it off that, then, I mean, Art got destroyed by Grand Saline last year. You know what I mean? But like, See, to, to also might, like you said, be another though, one. <laughs> but like you said, though, the teams are different this season. I mean, you got different. They teams, are different. So. They are. I didn't. And I don't know. I just. I was speculating. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I was just yeah. speculating. Oh, well, they got. You they know, especially injury. being the district game. Like Jonathan says, they've got a ton of injuries, so it could I, be. Listen. The, all. What do you say? All linebacker and running backs. Yeah. I mean, that's that's tough. Everybody's dealing with injuries, though. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Well, the that, linebackers the not being there could. I mean, there's your answer to the that. That could be game. the answer for the run game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Oh, but would, yeah. you got to give kudos to West Russ too. I mean, they, yeah. they've, they've maybe heard the the talk too that oh, they don't think we're as good. Okay, well, well you got you've got a new head coach, Coach Mata. His first year, he's been there, but yeah. this is his first year's head coach, so it may mm-hmm. take them a little time to get you know get things going the way he wants. I'm sure there's some changes at some point. I mean, you, you're, a lot of it's probably the same. He was the offensive coordinator, but there's could be some defensive adjustments and such. Um, and so, you know, I think they'll – honestly, I'm I'm excited to see this district too, I think, is another one that's going to be really, really uh, a good one. You've, you've got a lot of teams in there that can make the playoffs in this district, I think, even more than last year. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe he knew something we didn't. You know, maybe he knew – he knows that ARP struggled against the run. You know? Yeah. Maybe. I mean, it's it's entirely possible. That's why we are sitting here talking on a Wednesday night, and they are coaching mm-hmm. football. And they are coaching. You're right. <laughs> I am not the coach. <laughs> Speaking of that, let's let's roll on over to our polls, guys, and see how they shook out. As we have 6A, 5A coming up first. Um, the polls, we're going to start with the bottom. Lufkin at 5, Texas High 4, White House 3, Tyler Hyde two, Longview one. Thoughts, fellas. I don't know if I just went and tried to pull mine up on the computer, and I don't think it's the ones that I did last week. So I'm not sure if it saved or if that's what I wanted. I, I think I had White House at number two though in my poll. Um, I, I put them ahead of Tyler High because White House won and Tyler High lost. Yes. So I put them ahead of Tyler High. Um, but other than that, that was really, I think, the only uh, – That might be the only change that I do, too. Tyler – when White House number two and Tyler High number three. I mean, um, I don't see a reason why White House can't be number two. I the only thing I can think of is is I might have had – I don't think Tyler High – they played well. I don't necessarily want to punish them. But I think maybe Texas yeah. High should have been, should have been higher, um, in my oh. opinion. Um they haven't done anything to fall that far down, I don't think. Um, and I think, of course, it'll all shake out when White House and, and Texas High play. But I might have flipped those at least to have Texas High up one spot to three over White House. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's, that's about the only thing I would have flipped there. Um, I think we've kind of had the same grouping in the polls. It'll be interesting to see once district starts. We'll have Tyler High has to play Longview. Mm-hmm. Has, and Tyler High has to play Lufkin. Um, White House will play Texas High, so this all could shake up. Um, Eddie's Eddie's upset. He says this is so wrong. This is not right at all. He says Texas What's High wrong? is two all day long. He says. I mean, I don't. They're two. Okay, so so let's let's put it this way. Eddie. Uh, let's... Your your text. Let me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a comparison of game. Texas High won over. Legacy with a field goal at the very end of the game. With a field goal. Okay, they won by three. 
Tyler High beat Legacy 28 to 14. They won by two touchdowns. So I don't know that, you know, I know that's not the same. You're not playing each other, but it's the closest. That don't, that, that don't, that don't really sound wrong to me, Eddie. <laughs> so, so I could see Texas High three over White House. Yeah. But I don't see them. I wouldn't put them over right now. No, I wouldn't put them over Tyler High. No. But. Again, and, and that's High, all we have to go off of, really, is Tyler, that game. Yeah, Tyler High's got a tough, tough schedule ahead of them, so we'll see kind of how they are. And and if Texas High keeps winning, they'll move up. Um, he's saying they lost their QB in the first series of the game. Well, I mean, who did? Who did he talking I'm about? Saying, I guess he's saying Texas High lost their QB. Oh. So I mean, it happened. I mean, that's hey, that that happens. Yeah. I didn't go. Next. I'm not gonna give them number two because they lost. People got injured. So, so if if uh, we'll say uh, Jalen Hurts gets injured, okay, the Eagles are just going to forfeit the rest of their games because the number one quarterback gets hurt. No, they got to keep playing, right? Right, Kyle. Don't even put that in the atmosphere. Why would you say that? Why would you even put that out? There? I didn't want to. Not say, really that, but that they should be in the playoffs just because they just because they have Jalen Hurts. They, they, yeah, because they Jalen Hurts got hurt. And now they don't have their quarterback. Listen, we Carson Wentz should have won win. the MVP in 2017 if he wouldn't have got hurt in week 14. When Nick yeah. Foles came in and we went on the run, that was Carson Wentz's year to MV- win MVP. But he got hurt. Yeah, yeah, it happens. All right. All right. It happens. Let's look at 4A, guys. Um, so week five of 4A. Uh, number 10 is Brownsboro. Uh, nine into the rankings is Sulphur Springs, uh, the impressive uh, wins that they've had so far. Uh, Lindell's at eight, Van at seven, Gilmer six, Center five, Kilgore four, Pleasant Grove three, Carthage two, Chapel Hill one. Not much change there. Um, you got your, I think we all kind of agree about the top six for sure. Um, I'm fine with Van there. I think they're fine. I think they beat Lindell. So yeah. having them above Lindell is, it seems, Seems legit. Um, what do you guys think? That that's pretty solid, right? I think I mean, maybe Athens needs to be in there. That I I think I voted Athens yeah. in, but it didn't save it. That's what I'm saying. My four A one's jacked up. My four A one just oh. took the week before. Oh, that, okay. that my four A one's jacked up. But I, I think I I wanted to. I remember putting Athens in because I was impressed with what they did um, last week. So I think who do you take out? Who do you take out and put Athens in? Who's that? Problem the with that is Kyle and. and we can argue all day. Brownsboro's 10. They beat Athens week one. Yeah. So, I mean, so I don't but hate give me, give me, Give me seven through 10 again. Seven was Van, eight Lindale, nine Sulphur Springs, 10 Brownsboro. Man, I, I probably would have taken that. out Lindale. Ooh. Only because, hear me out, only because if you're going to put those other teams in, Lindale's got a two and three record. We want to go off records. Lindale's two yeah. and three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean their it's losses. Off. Their losses are two. Okay, two, they got that's two a good point though. Them. They've got two teams above them that they've lost to, which is Gilmer and Van. Right. And they also lost to, to Pine Tree. Pine Tree, which is a five A school, which just oh. lost to Marshall. So I mean, I, 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 if if I had to, if I had to take one out and put one in, I would take Lindell out, put Athens in. Christian says take Lindell out. Um, okay. We got Eddie says Athens is ten, which I mean you can debate that. Um, where is Bullard? Well, Bullard lost last Bullard. week. Um, yeah. Pretty bad to Carthage. They have dropped out of the poll. I don't believe Man. in Bullard. Bullard, honestly, Bullard hasn't played anyone, and we kind of talked about this. I gave him a vote uh, probably last week because the fact they hadn't lost, but they lost the game. They haven't beat anybody that was really good. So, in my opinion, they don't have any quality wins. You can say, and that, so and and so when you look at the top ten, the it, the thing is your issue with that with Bullard is that. Everybody else has at least one quality win here, yeah. except for Bullard. Well, and, and here's this: here's Bullard's got a chance. Okay, Brownsboro's in the top ten. They got they play in Brownsboro at some point. You got uh, Van's in the top ten. They're gonna play Van. Center's in the top ten. They're gonna play Lin- Center. They've already lost the cards. So they've got chances to earn quality wins. Ahead yeah, they'll of them. probably if they win any of those games, they'll jump in. Don't get me wrong. Bullard has the strongest strength of schedule. Is that is that total season like the whole that season? That must be okay, district though. That must they, be district though, Eddie. Because not, they played Maybank, Caddo, Quinlan, and Mineola. That's 
not strong. Yeah, not a murder as, well. as of right now. They haven't. No. They haven't added up a quality win as of right now. Their I get what he's saying sucks. though. What Eddie's yeah, saying is that sucks. what Eddie's looking at is the entire schedule, and he's yeah, saying they be. got a stronger schedule. But we're looking at we're talking about right now. If this is two weeks from now and they they're still undefeated, you know, okay, now they're in. Clearly, okay. Gavin says board will finish fifth or fourth in district. Fifth, I can see. I don't think they're cracking that top four. I mean, they. it's going to take a, a probably a bad – We don't know what they are yet. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I say I don't know what they are Because right now so, I'm ranking the, the teams. I'm ranking them Carthage, Center, Van, Rusk. But, I mean, they have to gonna, they're going to have to beat one of those three. They're going to have to beat one of them. Yeah, they're going to have to beat one so, of them. So, we'll see. They already lost to Carthage, so, yeah. I, uh, I Maybank's one and three, and that's who Bullard beat in week one. So even and Mineola is what two and three, I believe. Quillen Ford, I don't, I don't see how they have the toughest. Van's schedule was harder in the preseason. Yeah, and they're out of that same district. Center's yeah. schedule was harder in preseason. I don't. Bullard's strength of schedule thing. They Bullard's never scheduled a really strong pre pre district. That they're they want and, and get, maybe that's something they do next year. You know. Um, maybe they, maybe they, next time they, they, they get an opportunity to change their schedule up. Uh, maybe they do go out, go after some tougher opponents because you're going to have to do that in order to, to, to get the kind of, uh, respect you want. And you, you got a team that's winning, so there's nothing to fear right now. You know, I think a couple of years ago, they were struggling real bad, you know, and I, and I get it. You want to. You want to pick some opponents that are either on your level or below or to kind of build the morale of the team. So um, I get that part of it. But now you're seeing, okay, clearly I can beat all of these teams. Let's step it up a little bit. So yeah. maybe they do change their schedule of next year. Okay. The hardest one to pick for me is the 3A2A a taps poll. Um, Jefferson comes in at number 10. We have a mm-hmm. tie at 8 for uh, eighth with Hooks and Grace Community. Um, Beckville at seven, Garrison at six, Troop at five, Dangerfield four, Winsboro three, Malakoff two, Timpson one. Um, thoughts, fellas? Um, I had voted Palestine Westwood at 10. I'm impressed with what they're doing this season. They're, they are undefeated, I believe, so far in uh, – in the season. So I, I put Westwood in. Yeah, they're four and up. So I put Westwood in at 10. Um, I had Garrison a little higher at seven, but um, I mean, overall, my, the, I mean, the top, top five is basically the same. Uh, just yeah. kind of mis, mismatched around for me, but yeah, I don't, I mean, there's so many teams in this. There's so many teams in this, uh, in this, Group and see, I like Beckville so much. I, I'd like to move Beckville up, but then when you think about who you're going to put them over, it's just I had them. It's at such four a tight, mine. yeah. Like it's such a tight race. Like wherever they fall is where they fall, and wherever the dominoes land, they land. And I'm just going to let it be what it is because it's you could almost argue any of these teams being in that top three, almost or or top five. I'll say you can argue any team to, to be in the top five. Everybody outside of the top three should be tied for fourth. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, you got you got Timson, Malakoff, Winsboro, I think, or are, are yeah, they solid. solid they pretty uh, solid, but everybody else, they could be fourth, tied for fourth. Yeah, I think I, honestly, it's Troop. I think is is earned the the spot where they're at Dangerfield. Yeah, their schedule. They scheduled a really hard schedule, and they played competitively. They they played center very close. A four division two team. Um, they also played Timpson very well. Um, they're two A, but we know how good Timpson is. So I, I understand that one. Um, you you could definitely flip some of those around, but I mean, a team I like that that didn't get much love is is um, is West Rusk. I think now I'm I'm impressed with West Rusk now. I don't think they're at the pole level yet. But I could see them getting a couple of wins and getting some momentum and moving back up in there. I mean, if they if they run through the district, yeah. But I mean, there's like we were saying, there's so many teams in this group 
I know. that it's hard to break into that top 10 without one of those teams in the top 10 losing. Like, yeah. you're not going to take somebody out mm-hmm. if they win. So, right. how it's going to be so hard for it. I mean, they're going to have to win impressively. Um, it's almost like the BCS system back in <laughs> NCAA. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. going to have to blow some people out and run up scores in order to look more impressive to get into the to the poll because there's just so many good teams. Like, Winsboro, they play um, – they're in the district with – Pottsboro, I believe it. they're they're a good team. So they'll that'll be a, a, a they got good. a tough one this week with Commerce. Commerce, Commerce is five and zero. Commerce so, is five and zero undefeated. It's gonna be a tough one. So Timpson will play Garrison at some point. They're in the same district. That'll, that'll be that'll a good, be a good one. game. Um, as good as Garrison's defense has looked this year, it'll be interesting to see what they do against uh, Terry Bussey and company. Um, Jefferson, I mean, I was gonna think Jefferson, Atlanta, Tatum. That district, I don't think that's as strong as we thought it was gonna be. No. And I think Jefferson now, I think they have an easier path than maybe what we thought. So they could run up some wins. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so many teams in this area. Yeah, that district with Jefferson is, yeah, it's not good. Atlanta, Gladewater, Jefferson, Sabine, Tatum, and White Oak. Not, uh, Sabine, Sabine's looking at a playoff, being a playoff team. That would be a big for I, that, their program. I think they could probably be a, maybe a two or three. Uh, maybe a two. For sure, probably a three, but maybe a two. They can uh, beat either Atlanta or Jefferson, I think. Yeah. So, um, I think the the this poll's tough, but I think it's. I mean, you got to be a you got to be a thoroughbred to get in this poll. So it's so it's out, a, out of the out of the out of the top ones in that poll, how many how many in the top how many losses did the top five have? Well, Timpson's got zero. Malakoff's got zero. Winsboro's got zero. Mm, Group has man, zero. No Adrian has two. And they were to but Timpson. Losses. <laughs> yeah. Timpson and Center. Mm-hmm. Center's ranked in our 4A poll. Timpson's number one of this poll. So we really can't punt. And they were competitive losses, like you talked about, Kyle. It exactly. wasn't like they just got blown out. That's so I'm, I'm saying that to say that's just the top five. So yeah. mm-hmm. it's that hard to just get in the top five. Getting get in the top 10 is going to be even. I mean, that's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's hard to do. I have to do. Full transparency. I do the red zone top ten each week. So when you see the red zone top ten posted, that's really my collaboration with maybe one or two other people. Anyway, um, that's tough to do too because that's it's like, oh, that's everybody, right? I mean, you can't even lose, you can only lose everybody. a game in that one. Yeah, that's every. I mean, that's that's top ten from six A down. So that is the toughest one to do because it's just well, it's, it's tough, but it's easier too. Like, yeah. I mean, you just. If you win, you stay in. You lose, you drop out. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, all right, uh, Kyle, where are you going to be this week? I'm uh, doing double duty this Friday night. I'm going mm-hmm. to, at 7 o'clock, Mineola and Pottsboro kick off in Mineola at Meredith Memorial. So I'll be out there to shoot probably about a quarter of highlights for that game and then head on over to Eagle Stadium in Lindell, shoot some highlights up to halftime of uh, Lindell and Athens. So – couple of good games this friday night oh double duty kyle i like it and i'll be on red zone overtime at 11 05 on east texas now yeah our new that's our our tv star here mr right. red zone um mm-hmm. ben, you have the week off what are you doing on friday night ah man i'm gonna spend some time with the family i think we're gonna go out to the fair okay. uh just enjoy some some uh some family time on a friday you know uh, hey, and then I'll be you, back at it. You can keep up with the games if you got that NetSCN app. I got the app, so I'll, I'll keep up with what's what's on, what, uh, what's going on. So, is Center playing this week? Yes, uh, Center. Are they off too? Games on NetSCN. They're hosting Rusk this week, so that's that a big, good one. That's a big district matchup. We'll have it right here on NetSCN. Um, I'll be traveling to Palestine. Uh, me and Mike D. We'll be on the call for that one as Palestine or Chapel travels to Palestine. That game will be on Texan Live and also the audio only mm-hmm. version here on NetSN. So that's where I'll be. Uh, Chapel Hill looking to get off to a better start. They've struggled with Palestine the last two years with starts. They've just they've let them get ahead and and I'm sure mm-hmm. that that's been mentioned numerous times. Uh, over wasn't the last- it, wasn't last year's Palestine game played at like two o'clock in the afternoon? Yes, what, there was the one? The, yeah. the lights that lights we had light trouble in the stadium, and we streamed the game on our YouTube channel. Got permission because there was no lights in the stadium. Yeah, it was an afternoon game, 
Uh, Christian says three split screens, Chapel Hill, Carthage, and Sock watching all three games. Ain't mad at that. That sounds like something our man Corey would be doing. He usually has his TV split and watching a bunch of games. So I'm sure he'll be catching all the action. Um, that's going to do it. Guys, What uh, is there a big game that you're – the one game this week that you're looking forward to as far as matchup goes? There's a couple of them. I, I talked a lot about Lindell Athens. That's the one that I think I'm really looking forward to. I'm also going to have an eye on Alba Golden Honey Grove because of uh, some history in Alba Golden that they uh, love me over there. And uh, they're yeah. undefeated. Honey Grove's undefeated. It's time to see if the Alba Golden Panthers are for real. We're about to find out Friday night. So I'll be keeping an eye on that okay. game too. Okay. But okay. um, Lindell Athens, Center Rusk, those games are the ones I'll be keeping an eye on. Okay. Ben? Uh, he picked a good one with that Lindell Athens. I'm going to say I'm interested to see this Edgewood Grand Celine game. You stole my Cause game. Because I, 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 oh, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like I said, I work with somebody who has connections to Edgewood. They live out there and stuff, and they, they're big about Edgewood and stuff. And they've been talking to me about the defense that Edgewood has and the linebackers uh, that they have. So, I want to see what they're about. They were a good team last year, so um, this is going to be a challenge for them. I mean, um, I think Grand Celine is like, yeah, they're three and two. They're three and two. So well, another uh, another like, thing, Vince, that Edgewood and Grand Celine, huge rivalry game, huge rivalry game. They do not like. See, them. I don't even. I didn't even know they were rivals. I didn't even yeah. know that part. <laughs> yeah, they okay. do not. They're, so, they're yeah, about ten that's miles what I'm apart. Forward to and. Okay. And Edgewood I lost. Stole that one. <laughs> and uh, uh, the Winona game, I found out that Edgewood had four turnovers, oh, four picks okay. in that game, which probably mm, that'll do it. Why they got beat the way they did. All right. So games I'm looking for. Since Vince stole one of my, I, I found another one. So I've got a couple <laughs> here. Um, I'm looking forward to one comment. Winsboro Commerce uh, is Commerce a real deal? Uh, can they compete with the Finneys at Winsboro? I don't think so, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. That'll be a big test. Two 5-0 and o teams. Um, another one I'm looking forward to is the Harmony-New Diana game. New Diana come in at 5-0, and o, Harmony 3-2. and two. Uh, Harmony's got some injuries. Is New Diana for real? Uh, we'll find out and see if, if they're able to compete with Harmony. Uh, those are two games that I'm looking forward I to. I forgot about that one. That's a good one. Yeah, I forgot about I'll, that one. Now, this week's pick them. Make sure you get all your picks in. Um, it's a tough one this week. We've got a lot of schools on by, so there's some really good small ball games out there, and we've got a lot of them in there. So make sure you pick and do your research. Um, write it all down, or maybe you don't trust your gut. If the event says don't trust your gut, so maybe you don't trust your gut. Just go with what you're thinking. <laughs> uh, not mine know. anyway. <laughs> but, uh, make sure you get all those picks in. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us tonight. For Kyle and Vince, I'm Brett. We'll see you next week right here on the Weekly Wrap-Up Show. Enjoy your football this weekend. Night, everybody. Peace. Is your demanding work lifestyle in need of fire-resistant clothing that can keep up? Well, L4FR clothing should be your go-to for quality, affordability, safety, and style. L4FR was founded by a third-generation oil field worker who is also a veteran. Thus, this company has a deep appreciation for reliability and longevity, all while we provide first-rate customer service. Our durable apparel will serve you well for many years to come, whether you're working on a pipeline, a lineman climbing utility poles, or in any other environment requiring fire-resistant apparel. L4FR has you covered. Our apparel is tough enough to resist hazardous conditions while still providing high comfort and style. L4FR provides clothing options to ensure your safety and comfort, whether you're on the job or not. To view our complete inventory of flame-resistant garments, please visit our online store at L4FRclothing.com or give us a call at 817-757-4935. Si habla espanol. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? 
At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority.